Okay. You probably observed the changes in your physical body from childhood to adolescence and to young adulthood. If you are a male, you may see your facial hairs which were not there before. You hear your voice from high pitch to low pitch or you could be starting to develop your muscles and observe. Uh, your physical structures get more efficient strength when you have heavy things to lift. Now, the same goes with uh, females. There are some physical changes happening and you find it different from before. So this lesson, we will discover how individuals transform from a child to a young adult in terms of sexuality. Let's first discuss sex characteristics okay so primary sexual uh, characteristics are present at birth and uh, composed of the external uh, internal genitalia such as the penis the testes of males and the vagina and ovaries among females now the secondary sexual characteristics are those that are uh, formed during the prepubescent or through post-pubescent phases. Again, unlike primary sex characteristics which are main sex specific reproductive organs such as the ovaries and the testes, secondary sex characteristics are non-productive sexual characteristics such as the breast of the females and Adam's apple, uh, Adam's apple among men. Now, secondary sexual characteristics are those sexually uh, two distinct forms that are not directly involved in terms of the reproduction, all right? So, for example, males, their secondary characteristics include their facial and chest hair, increase the body hair, the pelvic build, lack of uh, rounded hips compared among uh, females, all right? So, the upper body can build a muscular build and the, uh, the ability to generate muscle, mass at the faster rate compared to Females. Okay, for the females, their secondary sex characteristics include a relative lack of body hair, so compared among men or uh, males. So uh, the females have thicker hair on the head in some cases, and, the, and also with the rounded hips or figure, and decreased ability to generate muscle mass at pass rate. So they are characterized also with decreased upper body strength. And also their breast, uh, the uh, composed of this kind of uh, structures where they uh, tend to be more bigger compared to men. So they also have the ability to nurse uh, children and uh, they also have menstrual cycle and increased body fat composition. Also, there are also exceptions to this uh, observation depending on individual differences for it, okay? So for an instance, not all women uh, succeed in breastfeeding their infants even if they are otherwise pito-conventional definition of a uh, female. So having defined this biological sex in terms of the chromosomes, the genes, uh, hormones, and all organs, let's begin this uh, discuss this sexual uh, differentiation, all right? So next, let's proceed with the... Uh, Puberty. So you may remember when you observe your body went through these uh, changes, puberty is the time in our lives when a boy or a girl becomes likely uh, sexually mature. So this process usually happens between the ages of 10 to 14 for girls and likely age of 12 and 16 for boys. So puberty causes physical changes and affects boys and girls differently so in girls the first sign of puberty is usually the breast development so a child uh, development expert professor james tanner for instance was first to define the visible uh, stages of this puberty so today uh, these um, stages are known as the tanner stages or more appropriately the sexual maturity uh, rating so they are uh, they serve as general guide to physical development although each person has different puberty timetable all right so let's first discuss the uh, uh, the stages of puberty so for the stage one uh, describes the child's 
appearance before any physical signs of puberty appear. So toward the end of uh, stage one, the brain is just starting to send signals to body to prepare for these changes. So for example, the hypothalamus begins to release the what we call the gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH. So GnRH uh, travels from the pituitary gland, which is the small area in our brain that makes hormones that control other glands in the body. So the pituitary gland again also makes uh, two other hormones, which is the luteinizing ho hormone or the LH and the follicle stimulating hormone or the FSH. Again, in the stage two, okay of uh, development of a child or uh, adolescent marks the beginning of the physical development. So the hormones begin to send the signals throughout the body. So the puberty usually starts between ages 9 or approximately ages to 10 and 11. So the first signs of breast called the buds so start to form under the nipple among uh, girls okay so they may be itchy or tender which is normal so it's common for breasts to be different sizes and grow at different rates so for, uh, it is normal if one bud appears to be larger than the other okay so okay so next one we have the during uh the stage three the physical changes are becoming more Obvious. So the girl's physical changes is usually uh, starting at the age of 12. So these changes include the breast buds continue to grow and expand. The pubic hair gets thicker and curlier and hair get uh, starting to uh, form under the armpits. So the first sign of the acne may appear on the face and at the back. All right. So these changes may include also among men. Uh, for them, uh, they have this... Uh, changes in their penis so uh, the penis gets a uh, longer or the testicles gets uh, continue to grow all right or uh, to get bigger some breast tissue among women or uh, among men some uh, breast tissue may start to form under their nipples as well so boys begin to have some uh, wet dreams so in the ejaculation at night or during the night okay so as the voice begins to change it may crack going from high pitch to lower pitch or it's tagalik na tawag natin na pag piyok all right so muscles gets larger among men or the boys and height grows and, and then also increases to 2 or 3.2 inches per year so this is just a uh, approximate or estimate so for a uh, tanner stage 4 uh, it is suggested that puberty is in full swing during this stage of so both boys and girls are noticing many changes and for the stages five the final stage marks the end of child's physical maturation all right so this is how the brain ten tends to influence the physical structure of the child when it comes to a puberty stage or what we call the adolescent stage all right okay now let's proceed with the erogenous zones. So erogenous zones are parts of the body among men and uh, women that excite sexual feelings when touched or stimulated. So they may be genital or extra genital such as the breast, the lips, and the buttocks. Okay? For light touch, for example, the neck and the forearm and vaginal margin are the most sensitive areas. And the areola is the least sensitive so when it comes to pressure the clitoris among uh, women and nipple are most sensitive and the side boob or the uh, yes the side breast and abdomen are the least as well so again erogenous zones may be genital and extra genital and according to study conducted by Eunice and colleagues in 2016 suggested that women have variety of extra uh, uh, erogenous zones all right so on the body compared with men so in the context of this uh in the context of this study of them it is important to uh, examine this issue in conjunction with problems of sexual dysfunctions as well so they uh, conducted this study to uh, know that there are extra genital erogenous zones okay and defining the extra genital zones, extra genital erogenous zones, with the most powerful excis excisatory uh, effect, and how to stimulate them 
with the aim of their uh, work. So among males, it may include the scalp, the ears, okay, the navel and the lower stomach, the scrotum as well, so the nipples as well, and the frenulum and the prostate and a small of the back or what we call the sacrum. All right. So these areas uh, may have several nerve endings, which happen to be the reason why for this uh, sensitivity of uh, these parts. For example, it is suggested that the scalp of men is full of nerve endings, and even the slightest uh, brush of the hair can uh, send tingles uh, through the body with a uh, sensitive skin for example on the outside of the hundreds of sensory receptors on the inside the ears for example on uh, the ear appear uh, to be the top of the list of erogenous zones for many people but of course this is still depends on individual differences so as growing individuals it is important for us to know the development of uh, of our body be it mentally physically socially and even terms of sexuality as they are part of our natural uh, humanity. So next, let us discuss the sexual response. Okay, so let me just show you some of these slides wherein we can um, describe some of the erogenous zones among men or the male, all right? And among females, okay? All right, so let's talk about the uh, sexual response cycle so we have different phases when we talk about sexual response cycle first the phase one excitement or the general characteristics of uh, excitement phase which can last from few minutes to several hours that includes the following so you may experience muscle tension increases of the heart rate of quickens and breathing is accelerated the skin may become flash or uh, blushes or redness appear on the chest and at the back so nipples become uh, hardened or erect so blood flow uh, to the genitals increases as well resulting in swelling of the women's uh, woman's clitoris for example and uh, labia minora or the inner lips and the erection of the man's penis on the other hand so vaginal lubrication begins among women so the the women uh, the woman's breast become fuller and the vaginal walls begin to swell so on the other hand the man's testicles swell their scrotum tightens and begin uh, secreting a lubricating liquid so for the uh, phase 2 or the plateau phase, uh, the general characteristics of the plateau phase which extends to brink of orgasm that includes the following. So we, of course we have the changes begun in phase 1 are intensified. All right? So the vagina continues to swell among uh, women from increased blood flow and the vaginal walls turn uh, a little bit of dark purple as well. So the, whim, uh, the woman's clitoris becomes uh, highly sensitive, may even be painful to touch to some individuals and retracts under clitoral hood to avoid uh, direct stimulation from the penis, a uh, stimulation from the penis. So the man's testicles, uh, on the other hand, tighten. So breathing and the heart rate and blood pressure continue to increase among men. So muscle spasms may begin to uh, may begin uh, with their feet, the face, and hands as well. So muscle tension increases among men. So for the phase three or the orgasm, okay, it is the climax of the sexual response cycle. It is the shortest of the phases and generally lasts only a few seconds. So general characteristics of this phase include the following. It may include the involuntary muscle and contractions begin. Okay, the blood pressure, the heart rate, and breathing are at their highest rates as well with a rapid intake of oxygen. So muscles at this in the feet, spasm, there is a sudden and forceful release of sexual tension. Okay. So among women, uh, the muscles in the feet uh, spasm may occur. So there is a sudden forceful uh, release of sexual tension in, um, uh, in women. So the muscles of the vagina contract. The uterus also undergoes rhythmic 
uh, contractions. In men, on the other hand, they have the rhythmic contractions of the muscles at the base of the penis result in the ejaculation of semen. Okay, so a rush of uh, sex flash may appear over the entire body. And lastly, we have the phase 4. Okay, so for the phase 4, is the resolution okay where the body slowly returns to its normal level of functioning and swelled uh, erect parts okay body parts such as the uh, penis and the nipples may return back to their uh, no uh, to their normal level okay so this space is marked by the general sense of well-being enhanced intimacy and often fatigue okay so some women are capable of rapid return of the, to the orgasm phase with a further sexual stimulation and may experience multiple orgasms compared to men men need a recovery time after orgasm so called the refractory uh, period during which uh, they cannot reach orgasm again so the duration of refractory period varies among men and usually lengthens with uh, advancing age all right so as we have discussed the sexual responses again there are differences between the male and a uh, female uh, erogenous zones as well as their um, responses to this sexual um, responses all right so in general sexual uh, next we have as we have discussed this uh, sexual response cycle refers to the sequence of the physical and emotional changes that occur as person becomes sexually aroused and participates in sexually stimulating activities including the intercourse and or masturbation and of course there are several human sexual behaviors that can be observed nowadays these behaviors are likely influenced Naturally, naturally or by physiology and even by sociocultural perspectives. In general, sexual behavior begins before puberty. But as puberty starts, it is suggested that individuals tend to have greater interest in sex and sexual exploration. Now, let's talk about human sexual behavior again there are factors involved in how a person may behave sexually it can involve inherited sexual uh, response or physiological factors are which are driving this individual to find to this kind of behavior to ensure for example uh, reproduction or other sexual influences such as the external factors from society that we are in so it may that that is also involved so first let's talk about the solitary behavior okay so the solitary behavior of masturbation is self stimulation to reach an orgasm or sexual climax for uh, most masturbation is done in private which can be observed generally beginning at or before Puberty. So it has been suggested that masturbation is very common among young males and among unmarried individuals. So, but of course, this solitary behavior becomes less frequent when social sexual activity is available, which we will discuss later on. So on the other hand, it is suggested that fewer females masturbate compared to men. So females also tend to reduce or discontinue masturbation when they develop social sexual relationships. So again, this can still vary depending on individual differences. Next, let's discuss social sexual behavior. Okay. So we have the heterosexual behavior or heterosexuality. It is an attraction of people of the opposite sex so colloquially known as straight so this is most commonly uh, common social sexual behavior among people or individuals which can bring natural birth to another uh, human being next we have the homosexuality so homosexual behavior can be defined as sexual interest in and attraction to members of one's own sex for example a man can be attracted to another man or a woman to another woman all right so the common term 
uh, for this one is uh, the term gay is frequently used as, in, uh, as equivalent for individuals who exhibit um, homosexual behavior. Although this behavior appears to occur nowadays, there are still ongoing policies and legal debates involving this issue concerning morality and justice as well. So next we have the bisexual behavior. Bisexual behavior or pansexuality or tendency to have romantic attraction or sexual attraction toward uh, both males and females. So it is characterized by this one or to more than one sex or gender as well. Next is the transsexual behavior or the transsexual uh, individual. So experience a gender identity that is slightly opposite of their assigned sex. So this behavior is accompanied by the desire of that individual to permanently change uh, to the sex or gender with uh, which they tend to identify. So most uh, likely, individuals who have this kind of uh, sexual behavior seek medical assistance such as sex reassignment, therapies or hormone replacement therapy and sex reassignment uh, surgery. So after discussing the different types of social sexual behaviors, let us now proceed with methods of contraception. Now contraception or birth control is designed to prevent pregnancy. There are methods that may work in a number of different ways. For example, uh, preventing sperm from getting to the eggs of a woman, so, uh, such as uh, using male condoms, diaphragms, cervical cuffs, and contraceptive sponges, for instance. So these methods may include high effectiveness to control birth. So, but of course, some may include uh, side effects as well. So first, let us discuss some of the natural methods of contraception. First, we have the abstinence. So in abstinence, it, it, uh, abstinence is the only form birth control that is 100% effective in preventing pregnancy with the use of natural method. Okay, For the birth control, abstinence means not allowing sperm or ejaculate or pre-ejaculate near the vaginal opening, so inside the, uh, the vagina. So practicing abstinence uh, ensures that a woman won't become Pregnant. So because there's no opportunity at all for a sperm to fertilize an egg. So again, unlike other forms of birth control that work to prevent pregnancy regardless of the exchange of sexual fluids, abstinence uh, prevents semen from coming into con uh, contact with the vagina 100%. So next is, is the calendar method. So the calendar method helps the woman predict fertile days by tracking the length of menstrual cycles over several uh, months to create fertility calendar. So a woman can be uh, most fertile at the time of ovulation when an egg is released from the ovaries, of course, which usually occurs 12 to 14 days before the uh, next period starts. Okay, So this is the time of the month when the woman most likely to get pregnant if intercourse would occur. So it's unlikely that a woman gets pregnant just after just uh, for your, uh, after the period, although it can happen. So there are also mobile uh, applications that a person may use or a woman can use to track fertile days and estimates of the cycle period. Okay, next one, we have the withdrawal method. So withdrawal method is another uh, form of natural method or what we call the pulling out. It is the practice of withdrawing the penis from the vagina and away from the woman's external genitals. So before ejaculation to prevent pregnancy. It is suggested that pulling out is not reliable way to uh, prevent pregnancy. So in this process, the woman has no control over it. And during the intercourse, a male can still uh, pre-ejaculate which contains uh, the sperm. Okay. So next one, let's proceed with the artificial method. So we have the subdermal implant. So in, this involved the uh, delivery of steroid uh, progestin and from uh, polymer capsules or rods placed under the skin. So the hormone diffuses out slowly at a stable rate, providing contraceptive effectiveness for about one to five years. So the period of protection uh, depends 
upon the specific progestin and the type of polymer. And uh, subdermal implant may be inserted at any time during the menstrual cycle. However, if unprotected intercourse has occurred within a post month, another contraceptive method should be used concurrently until pregnancy can be reliably uh, excluded by negative pregnancy test or by subsequent occurrence of menses. So a person who is uh, using this experience a temporary side may experience side effects during the first months, okay? So like headaches, nausea, and uh, breast tenderness and mood swings as well. So next, we have the oral contraceptives. So oral contraceptives are um, called birth control pills. The birth control pills, okay? So they are safe and reliable option for preventing unwanted pregnancy as well. So currently, there are three types of oral contraceptive pills. So combined estrogen, progesterone, or progesterone only, and the continuous or extended use of pill. Con uh, taking oral contraceptives requires consultation uh, with a nurse or a doctor about the best time to start taking the pill. And lastly, we have the uh, male and female condoms. Okay, so the male condoms are thin pouches that keep sperm from uh, getting into the vagina, inside the vagina. Okay, a male condom is worn on the penis. Of course, it is usually made of uh, latex or a type of rubber. But uh, some are made of materials that are safe for people. Okay, because uh, some individuals may have an uh, allergic reaction to latex or rubber. So, it is suggested that uh, when used correctly, every time you have uh, intercourse, male condoms are 98% uh, effective. So, this means 2 out of, 10, uh, two out of 100 uh, people will become pregnant in a year when male condoms are used as contraception. On the other hand, we have the female condom or the internal condom. So as you can see right here, it is larger than the male condoms. Okay, So it is a loose-fitting pouch that's, that is inserted into the vagina during the intercourse. So this female condom is being used before sex to prevent pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections as well okay so this concludes our discussion for this sexual self thank you so much uh, and we will see you in the next lecture